Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about common problems with the Still BR800 backpack blower. If you're looking to purchase one of these blowers new, we will discuss some common failures that may occur. Or if you're looking to purchase a used one, we'll just give you some tips and tricks as far as what to look for before purchase. So I'll bring you in closer here and we'll start talking about this blower here. So the BR800 is the predecessor to the BR600 and BR700 series blowers. These blowers are good solid units, they're reliable, make tons of power and move lots of air. And as long as you're taking care of them and doing the normal maintenance that needs to be done on these things, they will run for a very long time. However, there are a few common issues that will pop up or may pop up for you, so we'll go over those items. And I'll just start with the outside of the blower and then uh, we'll get into more engine related stuff. So at first glance, this blower here looks pretty good. It's about a year old, I believe. And one thing you're gonna wanna check on these things, they do vibrate quite a bit. You will notice plastic and whatnot starting to loosen up over time. You'll hear me talk a lot about the plastic on this blower being a little bit thin in areas. These blowers, of course, they try to make as light as possible. So some things are more prone to damage than others. So. One thing you want to check right away, like the recoils, just because of the vibration, you know, this is screwed down nice and tight, but over time, they will start to vibrate and loosen up. Um, you can fix that basically by replacing the recoil housing or the uh, plastic engine cover. And as far as the plastic engine cover is concerned, they do take a beating. The guys like to throw these things in and out of trailers, so they are a little more prone to damage they usually will break around the exhaust or uh, right here in the middle the top engine cover this covers the valve cover these things over time will loosen up and start vibrating really bad not a big deal you can just replace that you always want to look for if you're looking for one of these used make sure the uh, choke knob is here a lot of times what happens is when the guys are starting these things the recoil handle will fly back and it'll hit the choke knob and it'll snap it right off. So you wanna make sure that that choke knob is present. And sometimes the, if it's not, it may bend that shaft in there. So that's something to look for. Make sure the primer's not leaking, make sure it's dry. Air filter covers, they're good, they're solid. Usually not a lot of issues with those things at all. Gas tanks are great. We don't see any issues with those things. The frames are really solid and they hold up well. Every once in a while you will see one break right here again a lot of it's just from abuse you know these straps they just happen to have them tied on and a lot of guys will just drill a new hole right here and fix them the frames themselves are fine they hold up really well usually not too many issues with the frames the volutes and the housings and the top handle back to the plastics they're a little bit thin and we have had to replace several of them again just because of abuse Guys will throw them in the trailer, drop them on the ground, fall off the truck, whatever it may be. They will break fairly easily, so that's something to be aware of, to be careful with. Straps are great, usually no issues with them at all. You know, this is just kind of normal wear and tear. When they start ripping apart like this, the guys will usually just wire them. The back pad down here at the bottom, no real issues with those whatsoever. Uh, yeah, the other side, same thing. You can see damage occur here if the guys are just throwing them in and out of the trailer and beating on them too hard. The tubes are good. Uh, they hold up pretty well. The elbows, we've had to replace quite a few of them. A lot of it, again, is just abuse. The plastic is a little bit thin. They can easily get holes punched in them. You know, guys just set these things inside the trailer and they run into them with lawnmowers or whatever it may be, it will break them. The flex tubes are fine. This is pretty common. Guys duct taping them up because they will wear holes, usually on the outside of the tube because they get drug along block walls or anything else, cactuses and whatnot. The lower tubes are fine. No real issues with those. The throttle handles are pretty good problem with these would be these two screws right here they will loosen up over time and if the guys don't tighten them and stay on top of it this handle will get really loose to where eventually it'll either wear this handle out completely or the mount this is a clamp and it's got a little stud inside of it that this throttle slips over 
and it'll wear this clamp out and you'll have to replace that. The kill switches on these are, they do get dirty from time to time, so you will have to do some normal maintenance on the kill switches inside this handle. So if your kill switch isn't working properly, you may need to pull this handle apart and just clean the contacts. Basically all it is is two pieces of metal touching each other. Other than that, the handles themselves, the housings are pretty robust and strong. The triggers, no real issues with those at all. Throttle cables we have seen some issues with. We've had to replace many of them, whether it's just because of this. They get snagged on trees and bushes and you know fences and whatnot, and the guys are pretty hard on them. So we've had to replace them, not only due to abuse, but also we've had to warranty some of them due to uh, the cable breaking right in the middle or breaking at the carburetor or breaking at the trigger. So something to uh, be aware of as well. That pretty much covers the outside at first glance with one of these. Uh, just a few things you want to just look out for. Oh, another thing I did overlook here uh, that I'll get into next is one of the bigger problems with these blowers are loose mufflers. These mufflers like to loosen up and they like to fall off. So at, when it's all together like this, if you can, just go ahead and grab the muffler and just try to shake it and see if it's loose. What happens is, is that the, there's three mounts. There's two up at the top and then there's one down at the bottom and due to vibration they will start to crack the muffler will crack and eventually the bolts will break off on in the head and they will just fall off and then they will fall off inside the engine housing and it'll start melting everything and it just turns into a mess so that's something to look out for when it's all together like this so uh, what i'll do is i'll go ahead and i'll pull this engine cover off so you can see the engine side of it and then i'll point out a few things all right, I got the covers all off of this unit here. And this is pretty normal as far as how they look, at least around here anyway. I'm in the Phoenix area and our dirt and dust around here is super fine. So if there's any kind of moisture on anything, it's gonna stick to it. So this is pretty normal how they look, with just day-to-day -day use. Uh, on the engine cover, one thing to look for are all of these fittings here. There's three of them. This basically centers the recoil and then it keeps your spacing right for the recoil off of the engine to the flywheel. So you want to make sure those are all present on the BR700 and 600 series. These were always notorious for falling out and people never putting them back in and it could cause some alignment issues. So that's one thing to look for on the engine covers. Um, as far as engine issues with these things, there are a few. Uh, the muffler is one of them like I discussed earlier. So what happens is there's a lower mount right here, and there's a bolt, and then there's two up here at the exhaust port. Usually it will start down here at the bottom. The vibration will cause this muffler to crack. This will start to loosen up, and then it'll cause these to loosen up at the top. They'll either loosen up and back out and fall out, or they'll break off completely in the head. So that's something to look for to make sure that muffler, you know, you'll see black soot all around this lower mount if it looks like it's leaking. So that's one thing to look out for. The coils, we really don't see a lot of coil issues on these blowers. They hold up very well. Not too many issues at all. Carburetor wise, carburetors are pretty good. We've had a few issues with them as far as idling problems and whatnot. And then over time, the shafts will just wear out and they'll start to get loose. I don't know if you can see this one. They'll start to get loose in the housing. And a lot of that is just wear, wear and tear. If you've ever heard one of these guys operating these blowers, you know, in your neighborhood or off in the distance, they're just on and off the throttle constantly. And then when you have that much dirt around them, it's inevitable that it's just gonna wear the shaft out. So primer wise, primers are pretty good. They hold up fine. Just make sure they're not leaking. Make sure there's no pinholes in them. Here in Arizona, we get a lot of guys, they back up into cactuses and they'll start leaking over time. So that's something to look out for. Flywheel wise, they're fine. No real issues with that. Uh, engine pans you want to keep an eye out on as well. Here's one of the bolts for the engine pan. This is the lower pan. This one's pretty dry. There's nothing leaking, nothing obvious. On the BR6 and 700 series blowers, it was very common for the engine pans to loosen up and create major leaking and, and uh, vacuum leaks and uh, the blower won't run right, but they seem to have fixed that with the BR800 series. We don't see too many of these loosen up maybe once in a while, but that problem seems to be solved. Intake wise, 
the manifold, everything is fine. No real issues with these things at all. We haven't had many problems with them. And for the most part, engine-wise, that's the biggest thing right now we've seen with the, is the muffler falling off. The other item is that's very rare. We've seen it a handful of times is these engine blocks will crack. So right around the valve cover on this side of it, if you're seeing a lot of excessive wetness up here and on top of the exhaust port up here, and then this whole area, if it looks really wet, you might think it's just a valve cover leak, but what you need to do is pull the valve cover off and check the valve cover rail, and the valve cover rail will be cracked. So that's something to keep an eye out for as well. So if the blower's not running right and you're having problems diagnosing something, that's something to look out for. And I'll show you that problem here in a minute. So what I'll do is I've got another blower down here on the floor that's got a lot of these major issues, and I'll go ahead and I'll show you those up close. Okay, so I got this unit here on the bench, and this one pretty much suffered all of those things that I just described to you. The first thing is the muffler. Perfect example of what happens to it. This is the lower muffler mount, and they just start cracking right around that mount until everything gets loose. And then what happens is, in this case, the bolts broke off in the head. Right there, right there, and right there. And again, a lot of it just seems to be a vibration issue. And that's another reason, you know, the plastics will start really loosening up on these things. And so that's something to be aware of that that may happen. And then the other one that I discussed also was the cracked block. You can see how wet this is. A lot of wetness here. It looks like there's a lot of been oil been leaking. You could just think it's a valve cover issue. So what I'll do is I'll pull this cover off real quick and then I'll show you that as well. So once you get your bolt out, go ahead and get this cover out of the way. You're going to want to pull the gasket out of the way. And then what you're going to look for is right here, right here along this rail, you can see that crack right there. Usually there's another one back there as well. So that right there will cause a leak. And it'll also cause a pretty good vacuum leak. A lot of people don't realize with these stills, these valve covers, the way the fuel comes in, it comes in and it oils the top end first. And so if this valve cover gasket is leaking or if there's a crack in the block like that, that'll create a vacuum leak and it won't run correctly. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Again, this is very rare. I've only run into this about a handful of times. So something to be aware of. And then also when that usually happens, this lower mount right here is cracked clean through and that's something to look for as well at the same time now still is good about warranty um, they will warranty a lot of these issues as long as it's within the two-year warranty period or whatever you know warranty package you have so they are good about it uh, these are known problems to them as well so they are really good about working with customers on these items as well another big one too which is very very rare would be broken crankshafts so i have an engine here this is on the fan side of the engine and you can see that that crankshaft broke clean off very rare don't know the cause you know there was nothing in the in the housing in the volute nothing got sucked into the the fan wheel you know a lot of times you'll see guys you you'll get t-shirts wrapped around in there or whatever you know so but in this case, there wasn't, and it's, we've seen this a couple times, but again, it's very rare. They did warranty this engine as well, no problem. Another item, also, if it's making noise or if it's not running correctly, would be the fans. They had some issues with these fans, and these center bushings would crack, and then the nut would loosen up, and then it would spin this bushing, in the housing and you can see how this one's completely melted and the bushing itself is actually cracked so I'll show you the other side here so this is the engine side and you can see that bushing it's got several cracks in it and this thing was just spinning on the crankshaft so obviously the fan is bad and then it usually will take out the crankshaft as well again it was a, a problem still new about they seem to have addressed it I don't see too many of them anymore 
but if again if it's not running right or if it's making a really strange sound this is something that you might want to uh, to look at as well so overall again these blowers are good they have a few problems a couple minor issues you know it's it's like anything any of these blowers you know they all have they all have some kind of problem it's just ones that you're willing to deal with so but again overall you know i do recommend them they're solid you know it's the four stroke design they're good on fuel and they move a ton of air you know and they they will last for a very long time the biggest thing is this maintenance a lot of guys just they don't care you know and they just will as long as they start every day they just keep running them so but so there it is the br800 and some of the common problems that we see with them be curious to know problems that you guys may find as well in different parts of the country or the world um, if you guys encounter some of the same things that we do or not are your guys as hard on equipment as our guys are so but uh, so yeah I appreciate you watching and uh, if you have any questions let me know and I'll do my best to answer them for you thanks for watching